in a video game that has very, very little defense, Switch Stick is the defense. This video is going to talk about everything related to Switch Stick that you need to know to be able to run this at a high level. Everything from the literal mechanic of the Switch Stick, how do you Switch Stick, what even is the Switch Stick, and how to use it at a very high level, like the best cover shells and whatnot. So, first and foremost, what is the Switch Stick? Well, let me first spy my defensive line so it looks like this. When you have a user on a play on defense, when the ball snapped, you used to be stuck on this guy unless you tapped B or circle, which would then just click you onto the closest guy to the quarterback. That is no longer the case. Now, if your user is in a coverage assignment, you can use the right stick and actually flick it towards another user or another defender you want to switch to. Let me show you what that actually looks like here. So try to pay attention to where my user is going. We are starting at Walker right here. And I'm going to go top left. So we're going to flick the right stick, top left, and you're going to see it puts me top left. Now, this is entirely directional from the right stick at, uh, w compared to, or yeah, I guess compared to where the players are on the field. So if I move this guy all the way down and I went to the right, it put me on one of my spies, okay? But if I put him all the way up here and I flick the stick to the right, it puts me on the high safety. So this is completely directional based on where your player is at on the field. That's what I was trying to say before. I had a little brain fart. Now, it's important to note that this only works on pass plays, and it only works if your player, if your user is in a coverage assignment. You can only switch to other players also in a coverage assignment. I get a lot of feedback from people saying that they feel like switch stick isn't very accurate where it switches you. I actually think it's like super accurate. And it goes literally exactly where you flick the stick. So if you flick it down and you have a player down from you, you'll go down. You can go in angles too, but it's super sensitive, okay? It's not just a very blatant, you know, foot to the right because the right could be numerous players on the right. So you have to really get those angles down. Essentially, think of your right stick as a clock, okay? So that's what the switch stick actually is. Now, what is the value here? Why do we even care? Well... This is actually a super simple one to see. Let's go to something like a, let's go here, and let's go to a basic cover three. Okay, let's watch this corner route on the right. We have Downs running this corner, and let's see what happens. Downs is able to get underneath him. You can, we, we can throw that again, just to, just to showcase that that is open. Let's go here again. Yeah, we can all agree that's open. I just had a terrible pass the first time. This time, what I'm going to do, actually, is switch stick onto that defender, okay? So this is like a real-world use case of us, uh, of when you could do it. So we go here, and I actually have to go up a little bit, boom, and you see me actually undercut that ball. Goes from a dot to a pick. And obviously, when you're using two controllers, it's hard to do that, um, but you can do it a lot faster in a real game. Another example of this could be, let's say a corner route is getting above a cloud flat, okay? I see that happening. See that happening. Oh, no, no, no. No, you don't. I'm going up. This game's nuts. This game's nuts. I'm not letting that distract me. You saw me pick that ball off, dude. Oh, corner out, corner out. Okay, no, no, no. I'm up there. I'm up there. I'm up there. Thank you. Now we, now we pick the ball off. Dance, dance, dance. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of like real world use cases for that, right? Very easy to kind of see what that looks like. So what is like, how do you even get into switch chicken? Because the big issue I ran into is that I would switch stick and I would just go all over the place, right? And you've probably felt that before where, you know, the play gets going and you switch and then you switch and you're like, oh, where, where am I? Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I'm up. Ah, you don't even know where you are, right? You kind of lose track of where your, your user is. And that is, it's due to a few different things. One, I think it's massively due to a lack of planning. So every offensive formation has a few areas of the field that they're probably going to attack. A good one is whenever you see anything compressed, for example, so in this case, bunch, we have a compression to the right. It's when we have guys really close to each other. Or in this case, let's go, let's go to, da, 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 da. do we have another compressed formation to show an example of this? Ah, uh, tie well off, beautiful. This is compressed on both sides. Usually compression wants to attack the deep sidelines, the corner routes, and the seams, okay? So for me, I know that I have to be aware of the deep sidelines with that and get ready to switch stick there before the ball is snapped. You're almost predicting where you're going to switch stick to, okay? You want to have a plan for it. If you see this route, you switch stick here. If I'm running this, this defense right here and I see a corner route to the right side, we know what I need to do. 
I absolutely have to switch stick up here or else that corner route's gonna get open because you could stem it down. It's just super, super easy to get, you know, get corner routes open. This also plays a massive factor in defending post routes. The best route in the game is probably, ah, the best defensive adjustment in the game or defensive zone in the game, in my opinion, and this is what a lot of comp players be using, are these inside quarters. These guys are incredibly good because on a lot of plays, these guys are totally free. What does that mean? Remember that corner route example I showed you a second ago? Well, that corner route example doesn't actually work all the time where you switch stick onto that deep, uh, that deep blue on that side to go uh, defend the corner route. Well, why, why can't you just always do that simple? Well, what if I have a clear out, right? Because now we do this. I'm going, oh, corner out, corner out. Well, then B can get open above him. Now, right there, we were in cover four, so he wasn't able to. But if we were to check into something like cover three cloud, let's say. And then do that same thing. Boom, boom. Yeah. And right here, I'm going, oh, they got corner out? No, sir. Well, then B is able to get open up and above. You see what I'm saying? So clear out routes are the bane of a switch sticks existence. If you have a good clear out route well, that is pushing the deep zone back, they can't switch stick onto that deep zone to play underneath, right? Or else they just give up the streak for a touchdown. The couple of examples I gave right there didn't work out as well as I was kind of hoping. We just didn't get great alignment. But this one right here should actually. Let me just do this really fast just so you guys can really see. Kind of someone probably a little bit skeptical of me, which is fair. You should always be skeptical of what you read online. You guys would know that if you saw my Pat McAfee tweet. Um, but like right here. Oh, corner route. Well, guess what? I defended the corner, gave up the streak. So what does that mean? We want clear out routes to attack, uh, to attack clear out or clear out routes to attack people who like the switch stick. But if we look at something like an inside quarter on the weak side of a formation, they usually don't have anything attacking deep on that side, especially not like a streak. What do I mean? Well, this guy, you know, you have the tight end who could push him deep. You have that slot wide receiver who could push him deep, right? McKinney right here, you get pushed deep easily. Bullard right here though. Who's pushing him deep? Really nobody, right? I mean, like the halfback could or like a seam streak from 11 if he like, you know, inverted up. But like for the most part, no one's really pushing him deep. So, I mean, you could even use this guy, right? And that's what some people used to do. They used to use the weak side safety. It, used to, it has been popular in years past and has always been decent. Now though, what people will do is move this guy down here, that weak side safety. And then we're here, 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 here. Oh, I'm up, right? I'm, now I'm on that safety. That allows you to play post routes really well. This is really good for any kind of crossers, any kind of anything like that. Let me kind of show you a route combo this would do a good job against. We'll go something like this right here, right? We snap this ball. Post route. Nope. I'm under it. Wow. People, people are in my comment sections every day telling me that the users are fine in this game. Every day. Anyways. Um, and I, I think that counts as a user just because I was a user defender, but you kind of see the vision for it at least. You at least see the vision for that bad boy where you get to switch stick onto those inside quarters, do such a good job. Now that doesn't mean you can't be aggressive at times and switch stick onto, you know, a corner route getting on, uh, getting underneath the streak. You definitely can because a lot of people, if we look at the right side right here, okay. And then you look at the coverage, a lot of people for the most part. They'll see this corner route getting open, and they'll just throw it no matter what. So you switch stick onto that deep blue, you're able to come down, you're able to go make a play on him, okay? So a couple of big takeaways already, right? We know how to switch stick now. Uh, we know the best, the ideal adjustment to switch stick to, which is these inside quarters. These bad boys are absolutely, like, that is who you want to be switching, uh, switch sticking to. The majority of the time, right? I, that's not... I don't want to say majority of the time, but like it's a really easy rule of thumb. Inside quarters are probably the best zone in this game right now. Doesn't mean they're good. How do you actually get switch shaking, right? You want to have a plan. I think a really easy way to get started in it is every single play. This is something I made myself do when I realized, you know, that I wasn't doing it enough. Is every single play switch shake once, right? Have an idea where you want to go, then switch shake, right? Then you'll start to build up that muscle memory and your eye reactions. Because part of this is be able to go here, here. You know, back over here, you make this a tougher throw. And again, like it was open, but you get the idea. I was able to cheat that guy because no one else was attacking that area and potentially make it a tougher throw, right? We're here. Oh, now I'm coming down. Play that. Make that a incompletion instead of an easy dot. 
here's an example of me not doing that, right? I'm playing underneath, playing underneath, playing underneath. Now that's a completion. We just stopped on fourth down the play before. Why? Because we switched it, right? So have a plan and then make sure you switch it at least once a play. And that's an easy way to get started. Boom, right? Let's go over here. You can even go crazy. That one right, that one right there was a little bit nuts. We're able to do it though. Now we're gonna dance, dance, dance. Really, really easy. This is a little guide for uh, switch shaking. If this is helpful, let me know. If you want more tip content on this channel in Madden, let me know as well. We can do more of that stuff. Just depends if you guys like it, actually. And with that being said, boys, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Make sure you check out Civil.gg. Link in the top description if you actually want to win more games and have more fun in this game.